Okay, I've been um, using latex almost as long as I've been using Perl, which is about 20 odd years now. Um, and both are quite, I, I enjoy latex as much as Perl. So, um, what I want to look at is using latex as a documentation format and then discuss ebooks as that is, seems to be where sales of books are nowadays. Uh, Can you pull that door shut, please? Thank you. Sorry. Look at the tools for converting to ebooks and um, discuss some of the uh, considerations that one needs to take uh, when publishing ebooks. The reason that I am looking at ebooks is that I have got two books that I have published, uh, written by my wife, that they're about 10 years old now, but um, they've still got a bit of life left in them. Uh, so I wanted to put them up on Amazon. Uh, both of them were written in latex, um, and they're probably unique in cookery book terms in having a uh, well, the first one's got a 24-page index. Um, there's been a bit of pearl involved in checking the recipes at the uh, recipe markup. I also wrote, the, the first book I wrote, uh, Spinning the Web, was done using LaTeX and sent camera ready markup straight to the printers. They would then fax me back the, the changes. Uh, I'd make the changes and eventually it was written about six weeks and just went straight to, to print. Um, I've written a couple of books for O'Reilly using DocBook. Uh, I'll talk about that as well a little bit. So I'd say one to revise the three books as e-books. And um, given how easy it is to publish that way, uh, both Catherine and myself may write further books using that this tool chain. And, here are the physical books. And this is what we, want to, we set out to achieve. So it is now up on Amazon. Um, it's linked to the, uh, the paperback. It's got reviews and everything, so it's just ready to, to sell. Um, so uh, does everyone know LaTeX? Anyone not know LaTeX? Okay, um, well, in that case, um, let's go through it quickly. It's been around a long time. Um, tech has been around even longer, late 70s. Um, and it, it's a nice language to, to write in. It's not as um, verbose as DocBook or Pod. Um, it's very expressive. It has uh, a huge collection of packages, CTAN, sounds a bit familiar, I'm not quite sure which, I think CTAN emulated CTAN, or was it the other one? And the, um, originally, LaTeX would output to DVI, device independent format, and then you'd go to PostScript using a DVI-PS um, translator. About 10 years ago, PDF, direct generation PDF was made. And it's not limited to, to technical material. And it is much richer than the BOD. And as LaTeX source files are they nasty files, it's quite easy to generate um, LaTeX markup and then include that generated markup in your own documents. Uh, on Linux, you'll generally find that a complete tech installation as Tech Live. It used to be T-Tech, but that's been deprecated for a couple of years now. There are four main uh, command line tools. LaTeX to uh, create the DVI file and auxiliary files from the, the, the marker or PDF LaTeX if you're going that way. Make index will take one of the auxiliary files, and it's the IDX, and make an IND file. Um, Big Tech will uh, create 
a um, bibliography, DVI-PS or DVI whatever. There used to be a lot of uh, DVI tools. Um, as most people now use PDF LaTeX, that's become um, less common. And latex documents, large latex documents, tend to be built just like software. So um, the input for uh, veg is about 200 source files, um, and it takes about 10 minutes to uh, run latex twice, run make index, run latex again. Uh, late Tech needs to be run multiple times to resolve uh, forward references, and sometimes you have to run multiple times to get the references to stabilize in the print version. Um, in that, you could have, in a pathological case, you can have a page that is, you're referencing page 99, but when you run it again, it becomes page 100, and the, it just pushes the, the reference over the page or back. Um, doesn't happen very often. Um, you can, as I say, you can include verbatim code fragments, uh, images, etc. And there's, I've, I've written the latex driver module, which will do all the running of the latex programs repeatedly, uh, copy the file, your input files off into a temporary directory, run things there, put your PDF file back where it, in the original directory, then clean up afterwards. And there's a, a template to toolkit plugin to do that as well. Uh, so you can actually generate PDF quite nicely from the template toolkit site. Uh, at a tech user group conference in 1999, I met somebody who was generating PDF files for um, an, a Texan insurance company, just running the scripts manually and doing um, uh, bespoke policies on demand, which was sort of ahead of the time. Ahead of, yeah. Another neat thing for um, generating latex input files is something like SQL Translator, where you can actually generate, uh, that will generate, you can output uh, to template toolkit, or you can output um, dotty files for graphs and create entity relationship diagrams that you just include into your documentation. So that's sample of the book. It's not really very readable, but it, latex documents don't have to look like traditional latex documents. You don't have to use computer modern uh, fonts. Uh, you can adjust the spacing. Um, what space? That's, and in the second book, we even went full color throughout and played with the, the gray scales of the, of the fonts, etc. The latex markup for the, the recipe on the right hand side, the salata, is actually quite quite simple. There's, as I said, it's less verbose than than pod, in that you don't have a, a blank line between each pod command. Um, it's quite straightforward to add your own macros like oven temp, which is the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and gas mark. So they got up there, oven temperature, it's got the, the three settings. Um, but it's, it's quite readable. If you compare that with, that's from the Apache Pocket Reference, that page of dot book markup only generates six lines in the Pocket Reference. And it's all written by hand, <laughs> albeit with templates. Um, the complexity in LaTeX is in the, um, in the class files, which do get a little bit baroque. Um, so here we've got the oven temperature, takes three arguments, 
and just output as you want. Um, so that's where I was 10 years ago. Um, nowadays, I know that, that O'Reilly is selling, it's about 60% of their sales are ebooks compared to print. Um, and there are, they sell in three, at least those three formats. Uh, Mobi for Amazon Kindle, and you've got to do that really because Amazon sell most books on in the world. Um, EPUB is the standard, uh, and Adobe Digital Editions is a great way of reviewing ebooks on on computer. Only available for uh, PC and Mac, but it will run quite nicely under uh, Wine. And EPUB is also used by Apple. Uh, PDF is the other ebook format, but it's not, it, it doesn't reflect, so it doesn't display nicely on a Kindle. So ebook was designed for reflowable content. Uh, it's product of International Digital Publishing Forum, which includes O'Reilly and many other publishers, and it's superseded an earlier standard. Um, there are a number of specifications for the the bits of it, the publishing structure, the packaging format, and the container format. And the under, underlying document format is just XHTML 1.0 the CSS. Version 3 was standardized this year, but there aren't any ebook readers that, that support it yet. And the, the main changes are they use HTML5, more CSS, and MathML. Um, an EPUB file contains that sort of stuff. The first file just tells it that it is a zip file containing those files, meta metatype, meta -type, mime type, just for identification. Then the container tells it where the content is, which tells it what what the files are within it. Um, so you've got files like this. Just go through that quickly. The, the, the main bit is this content.opf um, and that uses Dublin core terminology like creator, publisher, language, etc. for the meta information. It's got four sections, metadata, manifest, uh, which is just a list of all, of all the files in the, the, the type of content. The spine is um, the normal reading um, order, uh, and the guide is just pointers to interesting parts of the book. So if you go to a Kindle, you go, you select menu go to, let's say go to table of contents, go to cover, go to the front, go to the back, um, and it, it picks it up from something similar to that, because Kindle is not EPUB, but it's quite similar to that. Um, there is a a CPAN module ebook EPUB that basically lets you generate all that sort of stuff. Uh, the, the, then you've got the table of contents, which is just um, an XML file that gives you the table of contents with uh, nesting, etc. Yeah, Moby is the format which is used by Kindle. It was um, a French company, Moby Pocket, that was bought by Amazon in 2005. Uh, they've, they have a variant of it, uh, changed the naming of sections within it, uh, and enabled DRM. Uh, and if you want to sell through Amazon, that's what you've got to produce. Um, tools for the, for the conversion. Latex ML was a real find. It was um, 
designed by uh, some guys at the NIST, the American Standards Organization. Uh, it's not on CPAC, it's a public domain program. I'll come on to that later. Um, once you've generated XHTML, you need to do a bit of manipulation. HTML tree builder is quite a good way to go if you don't want to uh, spend all your time fretting over uh, XSLT transformations. And then EPUB is the module I mentioned. Um, then, having got EPUB, you need to convert to Kindle. And you can either do that with Kindle Gen, um, which is free as in beer from Amazon, or, and if it, if it works, it's fine, if it doesn't, then it is stuffed. But Calibre does quite a good job of conversion. There's a, EPUB check is up on, um, on Google Code. It's a Java program that um, identifies issues in your EPUB files. I couldn't get it to run on my uh, Ubuntu box, but there are websites that provide online versions of uh, EPUB check. So the, the process of going from a hard copy book, or the markup for a hard copy book to EPUB is converting, first of all converting to HTML. CSS and images have to generally use um, hands tweak those, uh, look at various examples. Um, if you look at the O'Reilly Eva books, there's no DRM on that, so you, you, it's just like just like the way you can go in and uh, <coughs> see how they do things and um, make similar or, or dissimilar decisions yourself. You've got to tidy up the XHTML, which I've done with a a fairly quick and dirty bespoke script um, using true builder XPath to allow me to identify uh, node sets that needed uh, transformation. Um, and then the same script actually invokes EPUB to create the EPUB container. And then uh, the make file invokes EPUB convert to. Uh, yeah. Later came out, it's, it's amazing uh, what it does. It's actually a almost complete implementation of tech in Perl. Um, and it was the, uh, the place where Bruce Miller, the author, works. They have got a the digital library of mathematical functions, which is quite a, a hefty term for the mathematical markup. And it's all the, the original <coughs> book is written in LaTeX. They want to put it up on the on web. Um, and so then they were looking around for something to, to do this sort of thing. Uh, about when I wrote Spinning the Web in 1994, there was a program called LaTeX to HTML, which was a rather sprawling program, which was similar in some ways, but it, LaTeX ML has got a quite a, a tight uh, document object model for for tech. Um, so yeah, written by Bruce Miller. Um, Two phases. The first phase generates XML, and then a post-processing script transforms that either into HTML4 or XHTML uh, with a fairly small set of XSLT transformations. It's written entirely in Perl, um, and later it comes with a huge number of classes. There are a few base classes like book, article, letter, uh, and then other classes um, for 
uh, journal proceedings for different journals, etc., and styles that will alter the we do things like there's book tabs which will give uh, typographically correct table markup and things like that. Um, those can be supported by writing a little pearl pearl code, giving an anti XML extension. Bruce says that um, letter XML is not yet complete, um, and this version. 0.7.0 was released in about February, but the subversion repository gets updated a couple of times a month. Um, so there is a um, about 200 page manual for um, late XML. Um, and there's a, quite an extensive customization chapter that describes how to uh, write your bindings. Um, the first one there, IXR, was a macro that I wrote for yeah, indexing things in the context of a recipe. So, uh, tech takes, LaTeX takes two forms of arguments. One's in Put in brackets on the recipe macro and on IXR are mandatory, and the ones in square brackets are optional. Um, so the first macro that's defined there, IXR, it's going to say something like, okay, uh, index, I might use it, IXR onions in a, in a recipe. Um, so I want that, to, what I'm doing there, that def macro, is substituting IXR with um, replacement text that later HTML will then process, and it, I'm giving it a, an index command which says onions, exclamation mark, and then the recipe name. So then I get the uh, proper structuring of, you have an index entry for onions, and underneath that you will have the recipe names that where it's used. Uh, sometimes you want to do more processing on the arguments. Uh, case in point there is that I've got a recipe environment which defines the structure of the recipe. Um, I, in the original LaTeX, it's got two arguments. One is um, the recipe title as its typeset. And the optional one is the recipe title with no markup, no line breaks or anything like that to be put into the table of contents. Um, and then if you convert into ebook, you don't necessarily want to, <coughs> it's not like uh, creating a, a fixed page of output. You're not doing um, fine typographic tuning. So if there is a, an optional argument, you want to use it. So you, you've got latex ML gives you a gullet object. Because um, tech has this horrible anthropomorphic uh, model of parsing, where you have the, um, the mouth and the gullet. And they, they don't go much deeper than that. but. Uh, so that gives you, the gullet object gives you um, a handle onto some of the internals. You generally don't need to use it for um, creating bindings, but what you do need to do is process the arguments that, that you're given, because they'll be in, in terms of latex tokens. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm expanding the first argument and checking <coughs> if it's empty, if it's not empty, use it, otherwise use the second argument, and then return a um, CS, uh, control sequence. Um, control, that's basically saying, I've got a token that is calling recipe int, the internal, internal macro. Um, 
and here's a, a left brace, the title text, and the right brace. And it's, it could be better documented, but it's quite fun to play with. And if it breaks, then what I tend to do is run it in the pill debugger, run the conversion in the pill debugger, and stick dollar dv double colon single equals one. So it um, hits breakpoint as soon as it has a problem, and then start poking around with the tokens and see what's happening. Um, yeah, and uh, the author says that uh, you need February and you need to be devious, and he's not joking sometimes. Uh, and that's a bit more of the binding file. You see that most of the time, um, the second macro there, the recipe, uh, is matched with the fourth end recipe for begin recipe, end recipe, and as a latent environment. But essentially, I'm mapping my begin recipe onto something that's a little bit simpler. Uh, to interpret, or to pass back to um, LetterML to interpret. Um, another more extensive macro fraction uh, takes uh, numerator and denominator, and there are generally uh, fraction characters in Unicode uh, or. Most, um, even in um, well, HTML will support a lot of them. So, 1 over 2 put out text 1 half, 1 over 3 put out text 1 third, uh, push that back out to, to late HTML, and it will, do, it will find the, the Unicode character to output. Um, and once you get the hang of writing it, it's actually not that difficult. Um, this is the, uh, the first, well, this is one of the, the recipes as it comes out from later came out and you see the, some of the issues that, um, that that one needs to deal with. Uh, later came out is giving out, is outputting header and footer in terms of navigation elements and it's uh, numbering all the sections. There's a lot of white space and the links have got titles that um, <coughs> have got strange Unicode characters and they it's not really appropriate for an ebook. So what I tend to do is just uh, parse each of the HTML files and I, my script ties up the, the head, tidies up the links, removes navigation, uh, and then you get something more like that. And that's the, the EPUB display in power. Um, so that, that subsection was a 2.1.1. Um, what we need to say is serves four screws. Um, there you've got the output of the, the fraction. Um, so yeah, the those are some of the issues that I found on the out, with the output. Uh, as later came out, is primarily concerned with with mathematical. Markov, then it includes MathML in the doc time. And certainly EPUB check doesn't like it, and Kindle doesn't like that doc type. So just give me um, a better one. Uh, strip out the navigation links. Uh, the divs, everything seems to be enclosed in divs, like paragraphs are enclosed in divs, list items contain a div containing a paragraph and um, Kindle went, ooh, bullet point and then the, the entry for the optimized the bullet point and just too much white space uh, so I had to find the 
divs containing paragraphs and then replace the div with the, with the paragraph, uh, but take any um, ID on the div and put it onto the paragraph. Uh, sections of them, really don't want that. Uh, anything that's in the head, like meta tags, don't want that either. Um, and then the table of contents, you want that in a top.ncx file, uh, otherwise um, it's not identified as metadata. And the index needs post-processing. So, um, one thing about ebook publishing, which is why I, went, I, I started doing this about five, six weeks ago. Um, and what was said on Amazon about what was last week. Uh, the costs are incredible. Well, there, there, are, there are no costs apart from your time. Um, whereas 2,300 copies of that cost £12,500 up front cost if you sold any. Um, so the barrier to entry in the ebook market is a lot less, but then there's a lot more competition. Um, it's like where you're going to publish Amazon, obviously. Then the ePub market, uh, I'm still investigating. Um, people like Lulu.com will uh, distribute to iBook store for, for the iPad, iPhone, etc. And I think they will distribute to Waterstones and um, WH Smith and people like that. Um, you've got to think about pricing. Uh, O'Reilly tends to price its ebooks at roughly the same price, maybe about 20% less than the print books, although they do often have special offers. I've gone for the other extreme of pricing the, the first book at like, under three pounds, make it a, uh, a price that people aren't going to um, think twice about buying if they're remotely interested. Um, you need to, if you've got existing copy for a book, you can't just convert it to ebooks. Later came out, did work on the original 2001 markup, but um, it didn't look very nice. Um, <coughs> literally, about 15 minutes after installing um, Later ML, I had uh, a set of X HTML files, uh, but then I realized that there were things like um, see this recipe, brackets, page, X, um, and the X would be converted into um, a link that was the section number. Um, so what I had to do there was go through and identify all of those places, which is quite straightforward because they're page refs uh, commands in the, in the document source, and basically rewrite, or rather create a, a, a latex macro taking two arguments, one for hard copy, one for ebook. In the hard copy, it just evaluates the first argument and throws away the second, and the ebook it. Or in the in the binding, it ignores the first argument, and that there were about sixty or seventy instances in the book which I had to do things like that. Uh, there was also uh, I used tables for some page layouts, which just didn't work on Kindle. This sort of went off off the screen. I realised that that there were it was. Um, three pieces of information and just make subsections. So you've got to re sometimes got to rewrite your content for the medium. Um, and then marketing is still paramount. Uh, I put the book up first of, of November and there have been two sales so far. <laughs> so I don't know that it's necessarily going to make us rich. Although since that uh, I've contacted the Amazon um, administrators 
and got the ebook linked to the print book, which has picked up the, the folks from Michael Slater and Lindsay Bear and, and people like that. So maybe I think it looks more professional, a lot of EPUB books. And that's what you've got. I think that the two things that you can do is make the book as professional as you can and also price it very keenly. So continuing, well, I've got the, the second book, unfortunately, which people said when we wrote to, uh, published the first book, it hasn't got any pictures, and food photography is about cost about six hundred pounds a shot. So that was never going to be feasible for us. So we commissioned an artist to paint uh, two hundred painting, uh, one hundred twenty paintings. Um, and it is very vivid and it will probably work very well as a, an iPad book. Um, the only thing is that we, so, we sold out of the second book in a year and sold the rights to a mainstream publisher. I'm poring over the contract to see whether we've actually got the electronic rights still or whether we can negotiate with them and get, get them back. So, I'm, but whether we do that or not, um, my wife Catherine has probably got enough material for another couple of books. Um, and she doesn't like using Word anyway. She never liked using Word, and she's quite happy with using LaTeX and Emacs. Um, so, there'll probably be another couple of books in, in the next year or so. And so I shall do some work on the, the, the EPUB book, uh, EPUB module, to get it to score EPUB 3 uh, documentation plus to the improvement because it doesn't really, it, it provides most of the methods that you need but it doesn't explain why you need them. Um, and I shall probably put some work into LaTeX ML. I think that, that LaTeX ML quite interesting for creating uh, microsites, um, especially if rather than just generating a linear document, you created a, a frame set with the table of contents in the left hand frame and the contents in the right, so there was a collapsible uh, <coughs> tree of the, the content. So then write an article or larger set of documentation uh, and just generate the XHTML. Um, so that's what I've got. I'm just to show this is what um, LaTeXML was outputting. So we've got loads and loads of XHTML files. Um, the, the entry point is um, basically the title page followed by a table of contents. So what I do is I, I grab that file and cut out the, the table of contents um, because EPUB doesn't want it there anyway. Um, and then use that to generate the top.mcx file. Uh, the other thing is it's got a very extensive index and again that needs um, playing around with um, what I've done is I've there are about half a dozen rules to go in and sort of find on Apple Cake and then a link will take the, the destination of the link and apply it to the, the phrase and it becomes much more of a, um, a tight index. Um, sometimes you tend to see links repeated. I haven't quite worked out how, where that comes from. Though. So um, that's basically it. What I could do is just Give it away and 
shows us through all the all the files. So has anyone got any questions? Um if you just do an ebook, what do you do about depositing the book with uh, British Library and is it Bob Bodley and then is this somebody else? Uh, the Scottish Library, National Library of Wales and uh, Trinity College Dublin as well is the British so, uh, libraries to deposit. So what, how do you de if you if you just do an ebook, if how you do you just do if you, you do a Kindle book, book and you, you do it as a product don't allocate an ISBN. That's going to be the next question. <laughs> then you don't need to uh, uh, worry about deposit. Uh, as to ebooks that have got an ISBN, I don't know. I need to investigate that because going for the down the route of Lulu, um, there probably is some requirements. Oh, well, this works very well for program documentation as well. Um, it takes a little while to do you, you, know, you know you could run the LaTeX natively on the Kindle. Uh, if you break, if you, if you break yeah, in, you could, <laughs> you could distribute the LaTeX version instead of the ebook version. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know it's a little device. Yeah, and you can, you can get a shell and you can break in. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done it myself. I'm just install the light tech package. It's <laughs> possibly a silly question, but what are the most commonly used um, <coughs> formats for, write, for writing books? I mean, it's just anybody, I mean, not somebody who necessarily has a. Oh. O'Reilly. Primarily use DocBook. Um, they were quite involved in um, defining DocBook. But I've been talking to the uh, production manager there, and he's quite interested in letting them out because you can probably just go straight from the um, XML with some XSLT and, and get DocBook out of it. So authors who want to write in LaTeX could write in LaTeX. And already get the, the doc book. Um, the people that we sold the rights to, Broad Street Press, they. Is it Never heard of it. Um, That's the best. Word. They wanted Word. Yeah. Um, or rich text format. Or InDesign. Um, so what, what actually happened was they, they bought the rights for a uh, paperback. And I did the typesetting for that. So I gave them a PDF file to their spec. But you would say that Darkbook is the most common. Yeah, it's horrible. No, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to gauge it. Yeah. Because I, I know late is very And if I. Uh, uh, in, in a sense. Uh, so I'm writing. Um, Linux package 14 with RPM and YUM for, for O'Reilly at the moment. That's in DocBook as well. It's not too bad if you've got large expanses of text, but probably the thing to do is to, to not necessarily write in the format that they require. I had thought of um, writing in Markdown and then just converting Markdown to DocBook and supplying that. Um, Orion is quite interesting in that um, they give you these publishing tools or these proofing tools. Basically, you have a subversion repository for your, uh, for your book. Um, but when you commit with a, a certain um, flag uh, comment, then about three minutes later you'll get a PDF nicely formatted that you do an SVN update and it disappears. And, Subdirectory to sort of see what the book would look like. Um, and I think that for writing books, you just don't really need um, WYSIWYG. Um, it gets in the way. Um, I'm forced to write documentation in Word at work, and I just hate it. I have this, I, I like sort of all my. Um, 
function is to be in, in courier or something like that. So go in and, and highlight the, the word and change it to um, yeah, go through the font menus and things like that, or it's um, writing it later to really have a, uh, a command backslash fn or something like that. Um, you mentioned the words horrible and PDF. Um, so it leads into a kind of tangential question. Is I'm involved in extracting data out of scientific papers mm -hmm. which come with PDFs. And it's extremely difficult to actually convert a PDF table into anything really easy to pass into a data trace. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you had any experience or no, 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 no. I mean, back from PDF. What? Getting stuff back from PDF. Back from PDF. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's the end. The I mean, you get the text, and once you get into it, it or you get, once you're into it, you don't get anything back. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, all the scientific papers are published as PDFs. But what were they published from? What were they written? I know they were written in, but they, they only actually hand the papers out to PDFs. In PDF, yeah. So, you know, you can read them, but you can't stick them in. You can't do anything useful. There's a on the book, on the Kindle. <laughs> 